Hello everyone and welcome back to another Hotwire tutorial. So we're going to create a counter and it's actually going to have real world value. So we're going to be able to count the number of tasks that we completed. Then we're going to create a live clock using stimulus. And then in the next video, we're going to create the next five things. So we're going to say a modal dialogue, paginated list, color picker, and an accordion, and then a markdown preview using Hotwire, Turbo, and stimulus. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is create a new Rails project. So I'm going to CD out of this one, and then we're going to say Rails new task underscore manager. Once that's done, we're going to cd into task underscore manager and we're going to run a rails g scaffold command. We're going to call it task. We're going to say the title is a string. Then we're going to say done is boolean position and integer. And then we're going to run, hit, run enter on that command, run that command. And then we're going to run rails db migrate. So then we're going to run rails s and then after that we're going to go Actually, we need to open this up in via Visual Studio Code, so run code dot. And then after that, we're going to run Rails S. We run Rails S, and now we have it in Visual Studio Code. And the first thing that we're going to do is go to task.rb. So that's going to be an app models task.rb. And then inside of here, we're just going to add some scope. So we're going to say scope completed, a comma, and then like this, where, where completed, true but we're going to say done, true. Then we're going to go to the roots.rb and inside of the roots, we're going to add some new roots. So after resources task, we're going to say do end. And then inside of here, we're going to say member do end. And then inside of here, we're going to say patch toggle. That's going to be the name of our method. And then we're going to say collection do post sort and end. And then we're going to root to tasks hashtag index. So root to tasks hashtag index. Then let's go to our application. We need to put this collection inside of the resources tasks. And now our application is like this. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually create a task counter. So we're going to go to the views and then we're going to click on tasks. And then inside of here, we're going to create a new file called underscore, it's a partial, so it's going to be underscore task underscore counter dot html dot erb. Inside of here, we're just going to say span id is equal to task counter. And then we're going to say embedded ruby task dot completed dot count. And we can access this completed because we set it as a scope in the model. If you refer back to task rb, it's completed and that's where done is true. So we're basically saying the completed tasks is the tasks that where their attribute done is set to true. Then we can just go to application.html.erb and then inside of here we can go to the body and inside of here we can just say render partial tasks slash task underscore counter. And then what we want to add is an actual toggle button so we can toggle it and that will change the counter up here of the tasks that are completed. So I'm just going to add this h1 before render partial. We're going to say tasks completed. And then we're going to say h1. So now we have a task completed counter. And then we want a toggle button here. So we're going to go to the partial. And we're going to add that toggle button now. So underscore task html.erb. And then inside of here at the bottom, we can say button underscore two task dot done undo. And then if not, mark as done, mark as done. So then after that, we're going to say toggle underscore task underscore path task pass in the task variable method is going to be patch and the form is going to be data turbo underscore stream. So basically what this is saying is if the task is done, then we're going to say undo for the text of the button. If it's, if it is not done, then we're going to say mark as done. And then it's going to go to the toggle task path. And now we have to create that method in the toggle in the task controller. So let's go to the controllers task controller, create a new method. We're going to say def. We're going to say at task dot update done at task dot done. Then we're going to say respond to do format render turbo stream turbo stream dot replace. We're going to respond with a format dot turbo stream dot turbo underscore stream. And then we're going to say format.html redirect to tasks path. And then we just need to add toggle up here so that we can actually set the task. And I just started the app and I got this syntax error. So we need to go back to the button 
and we need to add a colon here, not an at sign. Then let's go back to the app. And as you can see, we have the button here. So we press undo. And as you can see, we're looking at at task.updated. We need to add just updates, another syntax error. Let's go to update. So to actually update it, so undo. And then as you can see, if we refresh the page, it actually does work. So now we can do that, but we just need to create a turbo stream response so that it actually does it automatically. So because this is in the toggle method, it's looking for a turbo stream called toggle.turbostream erb because it's in the toggle method and we're saying format.turbostream. So we need to create that file. So we're going to say new file toggle.turbo turbo underscore stream.erb. Then inside of here, we're going to say turbo underscore stream dot replace at task. And we're going to say turbo underscore stream dot replace task counter. And then we're going to say do. And then inside of here, what we're going to say is render partial tasks slash task underscore counter. And then we need to end this. But that should be it. Now when we do it, it should actually work. As you can see, it does. So it's a little bit different to the counter we had on, on this thing, but this is just the real world example. There's not many examples that I could think of where you're actually just like doing this, but it's pretty similar, right? So now we can add a task and mark it as done. And if we create a new task and mark it as done, this is going to automatically complete. So that's cool. So that's our first thing completed. Now our next thing is going to be a live clock. So that's going to be quite a bit simpler. We can do that in just two minutes. Before we go on to the live clock, I just want to add a simple, we're going to add a simple CSS to our application just to make it look a little bit better because if the application looks good, then more people will watch the video because it looks like, you know, that's just how the human brain works. So I'm just going to add this to our application.html.erb and then our app will look a little bit better and you can get this as a simple CSS or github.com. I'll have it in the, I'll have it in the description, don't worry. And then, yeah, as you can see, it looks a little bit better. So now I'm just gonna destroy this task. Okay, so now we want just a live clock. So to do that, all we have to do is we're gonna go to our VS code and then inside of here, we're going to create a new controller in JavaScript controllers. We're gonna say clock controller, clock underscore controller dot js we're going to be using stimulus might be a bit overkill but anyway import controller from hotwire to stimulus and then we're just going to say export default class extends controller it looks like this it looks like um it's being auto completed for me by github copilot yeah that looks good so then we're going to go to the application.html erb and inside of this just above task completed we're going to say in fact, we can have it alongside it. We're going to say div data controller is going to be the clock because that's how we access the actual controller. And then inside of the div, we're just going to say, let me just take this out of the H1 actually, because you can't see it. Inside of here, we're going to say span data clock target time. So let's go ahead and see if this works. So we're going to go here. I'm not actually getting any outputs, so I'm going to go back to the controller and then inside of here, I'm going to say this.timer is equal to set interval. This.update, yep, that's right. And we're going to say this.time target dot text content is equal to now. We're going to say new date. So with this, it might be, so with this, we're going to go back to the browser. Okay, so I just fixed the controller by making it new date. And also making the methods update and have the right names, no typos. And now, as you can see, if we go back to the application, we have a time counter up there and it's updating every second. So that's cool. So that's two done. All right, guys, so that's how to implement the counter and the live clock. All we're going to be doing in this video. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. I'm really trying to push for 10K subs by 2026. I'll have another one out tomorrow. So thank you so much and bye bye.